Marvellous story of a really enduring drama. Can you get me, give me some sort of snapshot of uh, how you got involved in it? Yes, I was, I was uh, in Canada uh, at the end of a very, very long shoot, very homesick, and uh, the script came through, and uh, it was about this extraordinary guy, Neil Baldwin, and I sort of Googled him, because I thought, this is so odd, this script. It feels like he's real. So then I looked at him and went, ah, yeah, he's real. And then it was Stoke City, it was all about Stoke City, which happens by weirdness to be my favorite football team. And I was going, this is very strange. And uh, I got to the end of the script and uh, there was something about it that nearly, I, I was pretty fragile, but I, by the end I was sort of uh, almost in tears by it. It, was, it really, really moved me, the story. So uh, I didn't really have any doubt about doing it whatsoever. How did you get into, into Neil's mindset? How, how did you go about trying to play his character? That's a long... Uh, well, I, there's, lot, there's a simple way, which is I spent a lot of time with Neil, and Neil was on set all the time. I mean, always you're trying to... When you're playing a real person, you're not really trying to become them. You're trying to be enough of them that it doesn't distract the audience. Uh, and, and Neil, you know... How do I, I don't really know how I do. I, I, I listened to him, I watched him, I, I talked to him. But, you know, Neil's got a very straightforward view of the world. You know, it's a very, you know, and I think that's what makes him so compelling. So the normal things you would do to get inside the character, to find out what they're scared of, to find out what they, what they're terrified of, you didn't, I didn't have any of those things. There's a great team behind you in terms of Patrick, Julian and, um, and Peter, obviously. Can you give me some sort of idea of what it was like working with those, with those guys? Julian uh, is, you know, one of the very best directors I've worked with. It's very, he's, on the, at the end of the first morning, I had a wig, and we felt that the wig was distracting. It wasn't the right kind of wig. But in TV, you don't have any time. There's no movement time. But he'd assembled such a confident team around him that he was able to say, right, we're going to lose that wig, and we're going to reshoot the entire morning. And he felt such a... Far from feeling kind of like panic stricken, you felt such a wave of confidence in his eye. So that there's that on the practical sense, but just his taste in terms of you know you're in very delicate area here, and both Peter and Julian were so confident at dealing with someone you know who faces very specific challenges in a very specific way, you know, and they you need to have very confident eyes watching you, you know. Obviously, you've been uh, recognised for your part in The Detectorists as well. It's going to be coming back for a new series. Can you give us an idea of how does the thread's going to be picked up for the next series? No, I have no, no idea. I'm, I mean, I noticed that Mackenzie got lots of kissing done in the first series, so I'm maybe hoping for a bit more kissing. And what's, what's new for you, Toby? What, are you, what else are you going to be working on this year? Have you got many plans? Uh, just finished Dad's Army, so that'll, that'll come out. But that'll come out in a long, uh, that's due to come out in February next year, so it's a long wait for that one. And then... Um, uh, second series of Detectors kicks in pretty soon. What can we expect from Dad's Army? You can, uh, well, you can expect, I mean, I looked around at the other actors and they're so good and so funny, uh, so quickly. And the script is so unusual because it is and it isn't the Dad's Army we know because it's a 90 minute story, so it's not like a half hour episode. And I think that it's got um, a certain scale that is right for movies. But I found it really hilarious. That's what I, I hope people find it really funny. I, I know people will be tough with it because we, everybody, no one involved in that project was less than highly respectful of, uh, of the original. Were there many don't panics and you stupid boys? The uh, catchphrases are duly respected. Thanks, Toby. Congratulations. Good day. Thank you.